All of our lives, we're told education is the key to success and that having a high school college diploma will open career doors. But for black and brown students, several ongoing societal issues stand in the way of that future. Uh, Dr. Smith, uh, Mr. Ward, you both are educators locally, uh, leader at MLK Academy for Boys, principal at Scott High School. Uh, take us inside those four walls. What are the challenges that our black kids face on a daily basis that spill into the classroom that make it hard for them to learn? <laughs> well, I know everything, it seems like it's on the surface. You think about um, the things that's going on at home and in the community. But we got to go further than that. If we're going to really deeply talk about this, we got to go further than that. And it began um, long before you and I was here. This whole system is broken. And the education system is broken. And it's been broken and it's designed to be broken. And uh, I was uh, taught at a very young age that education was the key to liberate me. And education has liberated more people in this world than um, any wars or anything else could have. So what we're looking at here is a broken education system that is designed for our youngsters to fail anyway. So um, you, you go back, all the way back to uh, before desegregation, um, the Jim Crow laws, you look at Brown versus the Board of Education. I mean, we're always fighting to try to get some type of inclusion, to get some type of equality of education because that's why those slaves weren't allowed to read, because of the power that comes with education. So because this system has been broken for so long, right? And there's so many other things that goes on with this. I mean, you look at the Civil Rights Bill was just signed in 1964. They're making it uh, illegal to uh, discriminate. So what type of discrimination is going on in the school system and things of that nature back then and all of that type of stuff and even now, okay? So now you look at, and in my lifetime, I've seen, um, uh, I lived the, uh, the crack act epidemic. I lived it, I was there when it started. I listened to the, uh, the, uh, the hearing the Iran-Contra hearings. I was a junior in college at the University of Pittsburgh. And right there, that act alone um, devastated the African-American community across this country. And so you look at that, and then you look at uh, uh, the crime bill that was signed by uh, Bill Clinton, and all of those things plays a factor. So now our kids come in, many of our kids work, I know in the high school, they work 30, 40 hours a week because they got to help. They got to make sure their little brothers and sisters are getting to school because they have to grow up fast. And then you throw in the different things of social media and all of that type of stuff. We have, um, then they come to our school and then they say, Dr. Smith, you got to fix them and make sure that they graduate. And it's a, it's a challenge that I'm open to and I welcome because I love our kids because they're brilliant and they deserve uh, to have a great life. And I let them know that on a regular basis. So when you ask about what's plaguing them, it gets all, it's, it's before the things where they wake up and confronting in the community. This thing has already been set long ago and it's been broken. Mr. Ward, how do you talk about race to students and how it will impact them once they leave the safety of the schoolhouse? The, the schoolhouse is that safe place where um, they know that they can express themselves and it's in a good space and it's understood. Um, as you have um, the foundation of elementary school, this is when you learn about your own environment, learn about the world um, through teaching. So we create a comfortable space for students to be expressive in who they are. Around this topic of race, people don't want to talk about race because it's such a painful history. However, our boys know that they are black, African American, however you want to say it, but it's black. Um, our boys have an inherent understanding um, through their parents. Racism is taught. It's learned through 
it's learned, um, the kids learn it, but it is taught. Education is a continental divide between the haves and have nots. So if you pay attention, you focus, and you want to work, you work hard. I'm a true testament to that. So our boys clearly know um, about the police. We have those general conversations as their maturation or development would stipulate. Um, as a student gets to the fifth, sixth grade, they're starting to see this world as a different place. So our boys, um, through education and through reading and researching and making sure that they are the absolute best learner to get this information. Now the, the learned experience of African American black males is quite different from others. So um, when you look at systems, there are a lot of systems that are not in our best interest or favor. So that's everything. Dr. Smith, uh, Brown versus Board of Education, you touched on that a little earlier, eliminating segregation in the classroom. However, to this day, some say there are still some issues that disproportionately impact black kids. Do you agree with that? And what are some of those? Well, yeah, I, I, I do agree with it. Um, the board, uh, Brown versus the Board of Education, the, that was supposed to help education. That was supposed to uh, enhance it and have diversity to, uh, and it started with busing and things of that nature. Um, but before that, uh, many students were taught all by, uh, black kids were taught by uh, black educators. And what they taught was uh, what you called the 110% rule. That you, 110% uh, meaning that you had to be 10% even better than the kids that, the, the white kids and the other surrounding areas. And the reason being because those educators knew that you were gonna face uh, uh, systemic racism and so they know not only did you have to have your education but you also have to be that much better just to even get a foot in the door to get an opportunity so yeah does those things still affect us as I stated before there's things going on um, uh, systemic wise that has a direct effect on our youngsters in their education and their inability to uh, to achieve at a high level so yes, that, there's things that are going on. And so, but then like I, as I alluded to before, you look at uh, the, uh, the uh, crack epidemic. We're still uh, facing ripple effects from that. that. That was so damaging. And then after that, then you put it in the community and then you take away the people who, who are supposed to take, protect the community and protect the family and protect the kids. And that's the, that's the black man. But, He's trying to take care of them and take care of the family and the community, but they're all going to jail, becoming felons. For what? So now you look at, opposed to the opiates, they're getting treatment and rehabilitation as it should be, right? So that also has an effect with the, the, uh, the black male missing in the community in the household. That has a, a tremendous effect on our children and their confidence and their beliefs in themselves. Mr. Ward, let's talk about implicit biases in the classroom. How do you deal with it? How do you avoid it? Um, <clears throat> implicit biases are, are, are those things that in the subconscious, a person would not know unless it's, it's brought out. Um, it's brought out through belief, belief systems. Um, so through that, um, understanding and education around implicit bias, biases. So you basically would have to take an assessment of it to see if you were um, biased in any way. Everyone is, everyone is. And, but the, the challenge is to see to what a degree. And, and if you have those biases, are you acting on those biases? So once you know better, you do better. So what we do is basically have conversations around children, belief systems, stereotypes and so forth. So um, professional development is one way, but you can have all the professional development and still don't change internally or your belief system. So what we do is try to use race as a, a meet in the middle kind of situation, like we're, what's going on today. Um, people are tired, people are fed up, but the understanding is 
if we ever come to the table to talk about this, these are some things that you're gonna be told about yourself that you need to change to affect kids. So we um, have professional development conversations, quite candid conversations. Of course, in a respectful way, however, sometimes when it comes out, it's not always received because someone has exposed a bias that you may have had. Dr. Smith, as a principal of a high school, unfortunately, you've seen your share of obituaries. Yes. Current students, former students, mm -hmm. uh, black on black crime, youth mm -hmm. crime. Knowing the challenges they face, what is your response to those who say, why should I worry about black lives when they're committing these crimes against themselves? Yeah, well, true, we do have issues with um, with black crimes and black on black crimes, but so does other ethnic groups as well. So they have issues as well. This is a problem that we're going to solve within our community. This is something that we saw and we should solve within our community. Um, and typically those are how those things are addressed. Now, as far as a lot of the behavior, a lot of the behavior our youngsters are seeing is learned behavior and they are acting these behaviors out. And once again, as I alluded to, because of a lack of mentoring in our communities, a lack of opportunities, a lack of understandings for our children. And this is the reason why sometimes they get into situations, whereas this uh, at a point of no return, where they may be committing a murder or they're being murdered themselves. So these are type of things, we talk to our children at Scott High School. We have monthly assemblies, class assemblies, with individual classes, and we talk about these type of things at Scott High School. We bring in speakers, we bring in the sheriff department, we've brought in the prosecutors, uh, the, uh, people from the prosecutors, but we also bring in people from the, uh, uh, the workforce. We bring in people from heavy lifting ma uh, machinery, we bring in colleges, we bring in all of these things. The thing is, is that we have to take on a responsibility to provide every type of of opportunity for our kids to ensure that they have a good life. So that means me as the principal, as our hub director, our hub school, if we have to pick up on an area where they may be lacking, our children may be lacking uh, in, the, in their homes, in their communities, then that's what I'm there for. Mr. Ward, is this the generation of change? Will this generation bridge this racial divide? That's, that's, that's a pretty deep question. And this gener generation, yes. I think it is, to answer your quest, question right away. Um, these students are thinkers. These kids are thinkers. They have technology at the, their fingertips and they know how to use it. Now this wor world has gotten smaller because, that, because we have access to technology um, in real time. So I think um, this, this generation is very educated, very educated on um, self-image and how they portray or teach others about their culture, their her heritage, and what they actually know. So I think this is the, the generation of change. 